currently on a permanent basis. Before that breaking news, we were talking about the size of a CEO's home versus the stock performance. That story is generating a lot of buzz and probably making some investors take another look at the performance of their stocks. New York University professor David Yermak is with us. He's co-author of the study, and he joins us to explain his findings. Fred Smith, meanwhile, founder and president of the Competitive Enterprise Institute, does not think that there is a direct correlation. Gentlemen, we welcome you to the closing bell. Let's talk first about the study, gentlemen. Why don't you take us through it, David? Exactly what did you find? How do you come up with the idea that there is a direct correlation? The bigger the home for the guy in the corner office, the worse the stock performs. Well, I, I undertook the research when Internet sites became available where you could search any address in the U.S., essentially, and get information about your property, the size of the house, the value, and so forth. I merged information about CEOs with their home addresses, got the real estate data on where they lived, and checked a variety of variables to see whether there were correlations with the company's performance. And in fact, the results are quite dramatic, stronger than just about any variable you usually see. So what's the idea that, that, they're, that they're selling stock to raise money to put it into their own personal situation? Or what? I mean, what's behind these findings? The, the financing of the house turns out to be very important. Um, there's a group of these CEOs who pay at least part of the home purchase through insider sales of stock and options just right before the house closes. And that group especially seems to underperform rather dramatically. Fred, the numbers are there. Actually, it's not surprising that when information exists about the future value, it's going to be owned by individuals inside more than others. And therefore, in fact, that's going to reflect indirectly if you can't reflect it directly. One wonders whether or not that size and uh, whether or not you decided to stay married to your old wife or get a trophy wife married in. And one certainly wonders about whether Don Imus, what the size of his house was and whether this foreshadowed a collapse. Generally speaking, though, there's a real risk here when we're beginning to use edifice, uh, edifice envy as a way of characterizing whether or not guys are, are winners or losers, and a really big problem when we basically suppress the natural use of information and make it expressed through these highly indirect ways, like whether you have a larger or a smaller house. Yeah, well, that's a good point, David. What about that? I mean, is there a risk that we're using too much information and jumping to conclusions? Well, any information is valuable, but something Fred said I would tend to agree with, which is that there are other motives for buying these large houses, and this family situation of a CEO is probably quite important. People buy houses when they have more children or perhaps when they divorce and remarry, and it may be those family episodes that are driving or perhaps distracting the CEO, um, causing changes in company performance, and unfortunately, we don't have public data that we can look directly at these things, so it may be that the house purchase is really proxying for something else that's also quite important. Yeah, that, that's a good point, and, I, and I'm glad you brought up the uh, Dow Chemical story. Gentlemen, I apologize for having to cut this short. We did have the breaking news on CBS. We uh, hope to get back to this story in the future. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. We appreciate it. Meanwhile, back